Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to be going over how to build your own custom Linux kernel and um, I'm just going to be doing this my way. Um, it's not the only way, it's probably not the most professional way, but it is probably one of the easiest ways and easiest to follow along. So I'm just going to, without much further ado, I'm just going to get right into it. Um, you need to think why you're building a custom kernel. Uh, pretty much the only real reasons are if you are uh, need an experimental feature which is not enabled uh, or you're just curious and want to do it on your own and you understand that you might break something Cause especially if you're using um, a mainline kernel or an upstream kernel ver version than this than a stable not a stable version or a long-term support version that you might very well break the operating system and have to reboot into a different kernel so if just understand that the kernel you build may not work so don't like don't go into this without kind of knowing what you're doing your computer hardware won't be harmed unless of course you really get into like messing with like some of the drivers which you should never do unless of course you're developing drivers but there should never really be a reason you touch the drivers just pretty much going through and checking experimental features if you need them or just kind of building an upstream version than what you have because you're curious um, don't compile a kernel because you need a special driver like this it's this number one reason don't don't do it if you need a driver like there you can recompile the driver thing and reboot the system like that's all you need to do and then don't you don't have to do anything crazy and then you can also install the kernel without compilation if you don't need any special features you can just install the kernel without specifications if you use Snaptic or you can use it from apt uh, or you can get them from here like this is I'm, I'm building a release candidate for 4.9 because I want to try an experimental feature so like there's already pre-built versions of it don't build it if you just want the upstream version so um, these are the packages right here you need to install as this is probably the most recent version of the kernel I've seen so just copy and paste this into your terminal you can just copy and then control shift V in your terminal uh, just control shift V is paste and I'm gonna say no because I already know I have everything I need for this so I'm just gonna clear those and um, so right now I'm gonna get into the meat and meat and taters of this tutorial which is the really ugly part and we're gonna be using root so don't do anything stupid like delete your entire operating system so and this needs to go without saying but I have to say it anyway I'm not responsible for anything stupid you do whether you're being a root user so just don't do anything stupid and don't harm your computer in any way alright so sudo su and you enter so now you're root so you can type who am I it says root because you are now the root so cd um, USR SRC so user source using system resources source clear this so um, the next thing I'm gonna do is go to the kernel page here and then get this link right here for the complete tarball at XC say um, I'm gonna copy the link address pop open my terminal again and then use the wget command and then control shift V to copy that into this directory and then I will be back when this is done I have slow internet so it'll be a while. Okay, so this is about to finish up here and it is now saved in the directory so you can see right here um, this tar.xc file right there so we're gonna unzip that and change into the directory so we just tar x capital JF and then we select Linux dash Oh, it's not going to let me autocomplete. There we go. So we just select that tar.xz and it'll extract it to the fo a folder called Linux 4.9 RC7. And now we're going to change directories into that directory. Okay, so now we are in here. So now the next part here, we need to get the patches. Each distribution has their own patches, and you can find them pretty much just by Googling them. I'm using Ubuntu here, so I'm just going to use Ubuntu's packages for this. Um, I'm just going to be really lazy and use wget again like I did in the last part. It's super simple and easy to understand because all it does is just get this package and download it to your current directory. 
So copy link address to get the first patch. Control shift V to paste. That's the first patch. That's a rather large one, so it might take a bit longer than the other ones. But then all you really do is copy the link address and then just download it in this directory. And I'll be back when this is done. I'll just skip. Ah, uh, you know, I'm just I'm just gonna fast forward. You guys don't know how slow my internet is. Alright, and then we'll repeat the process. The next one. And the next one. And the one after that. Hmm. <laughs> That would take a little longer, I was getting worried. And then of course the patch. So now that I have all of the patches here, um, you need to patch the kernel that we're in. So we do patch-p1, the arrow pointing towards the left, why, I don't know. Type zero, 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 and the first one is one. They're applied in the order with the numbers, so you just do that, and then hit enter, and then zero, zero, two, hit tab to autocomplete, and enter, and zero, zero, three, tab to autocomplete, and then you hit up, by the way. If you hit up on your keyboard, it'll bring up the last command you just ran. So then. Continue to follow this perplexing pattern. I believe there are six of them, and of course I would do that. Six. Okay, so now we are done with all of our patches, and um, the next thing we need to do is uh, make menu def or menu config. For this to work, you need to make sure that you have uh, libncurses, the development thing here, which you should install if you followed this. It's like right here, libncurses5-dev. Um, they've also changed the name of that package a couple times, so I should probably show you how to find that. So you do what you do is apt search uh, libncurses, and then do that, and it'll search, and then you can see the list of libncurses5. So like. This is actually what it's called now, libncurses5-dev. I have this libncurses-w5, so like, I don't know what the difference is, honestly, but it works fine for me, so just make sure that you have um, the right packages, and if you don't have any, you can use the app search tool to find them. So the reason we're doing this is probably going to be clear in this part. This is the menu config, and, um, Pretty much keep everything the same unless you you know exactly what you're doing. So right, I'm I'm ex I'm gonna enable an experimental driver here for my graphics cards. So I just want to make sure that that works. And these are not in any like logical order. So graphics support. So ATI Radeon. I'm going to say no. I don't want that. I want ES to AMD GPU. So that will be. Um, so I want to enable support for uh, CIK and SI parts. I don't know. Uh, those are diff different versions. So it's experimental right now, and there's a good chance it doesn't work because I've tried this with like the last three current releases and it didn't work. But I I don't really care. I'm just gonna let this run in the background so it's not taking up much of my time. Um, so when we've got everything you want um, working all the configuration stuff you need. Hit escape to the top and you just hit yes to save your kernel um, things, your kernel config. So it gets written to this dot config file here in your current directory. So now what you want to do is you do make dash j and then for the number of jobs you can possibly do is 
up to the number of processors on your system. Um, in Ubuntu, you can go to about this computer and see it's right here. And there's also, uh, you can also use the numproc command. So, oh, oh, it's nproc. So nproc on mine, it's eight. So you can just see that. So make um, dash j eight. And I want to target it to be a deb package so that I can build Debian packages when I'm done. And I'm also going to do local version, all caps equals dash DGU test so test so this is the name that'll show up like you know how it normally says like Linux kernel image or generic or whatever so normally the local version it's just called generic so this one will be AMD GPU test so I I'm gonna hit oh wait hold on So I'm gonna uh, like time this just to like see how long it takes. So make dash j make, and I'm just gonna run time here to show you how long it takes, so you can skip ahead without having to do anything. This time command will run the command that's already in there, and then it will uh, tell you how long it takes. So I'm just gonna run that, and I'll be back in about whatever this tells you. Alright guys, so after that whole debacle, um, it ended up taking 59 minutes and 48 seconds. So, the, even on a fairly powerful system, I'm not like a workstation system here, but a fairly high-end processor, overclocked a little bit too, it still took almost an hour to complete this. So, it, yeah, it, it's not a very fast process, but uh, now on to installing the kernel. So. Uh, See, yeah, I can't see a darn thing. This, so I'm just going to change directories to the parent directory and do a long listing, which is LL. And you can see these Debian files that are all here now, and you see the AMD GPU test dash one. That's what we named the kernel when we put local version equals AMD GPU test. So what we're going to do now is install those kernels with dpkg dash i for install. And since these are the only Debian packages in this directory, I'm just going to use star dot deb. And that way, it will install the kernel. It'll install all the Debian packages in this directory. So if you have other Debian packages in the directory, make sure you install each one individually. All right. Well, I guess that's that. So, guys, uh, thank you for watching this video. Um, I guess. Sorry. I guess that's not that. So now. Uh, we're at the point where we would just reboot our computer and it should reboot into the kernel we just installed. So uh, I guess if it works, congratulations. If it doesn't, reboot. Um, go to the advanced options in Grub and reboot the old kernel like the one you're using right now. So like if you type uname-r, you can see the kernel you're using right now. You can go ahead and do that one. So that way uh, when you boot into this one, you'll know it works because it's the one you're using right now. Um, so if you like this video, go ahead and show me some love and hit that like button. If you didn't like this video, I don't care. And if you would uh, have some time, go ahead and click subscribe. I'm going to eventually try to make more videos, and I'm glad I made something that wasn't the same video I always make. So that's wonderful. Oh, and thank you guys for the support as well. I never really expected any of my videos to get anywhere near as high as they are, especially that uh, Minji WGCC video. Like, it's almost at 100,000 views now. I didn't think anyone liked me that much, so this is nice, I guess. Anyways, thank you all. Have a nice day.